Hello again guys, this is gonna be a bit of an interesting video if everything works out appropriately. A little while back I made a video about the iPhone 8 Plus and I mentioned in another video that I had gone ahead and pre-ordered the iPhone 10, the iPhone X, whatever you wanna call it. Well, I'm here at home today with my youngest son. They sent him home from daycare with strep throat, so I'm here taking care of him. And I just happened to check the Apple Store app on my phone because I'd seen somebody mention that you need to constantly be checking stock on your local stores just to see if it happens to pop up in stock because my iPhone 10 pre-order is gonna ship sometime in December, a month from now or so, and I'd really like to have it before I go on vacation here in a few weeks. So I checked again today, just on a whim again, and lo and behold, one of the local stores here in Louisville, Kentucky, had a 256 gig iPhone 10 in stock, ready to be picked up, and I went ahead and placed the order. I was actually not looking to buy the 256 gig model just because first generation new style device, not really into paying the extra money for it, but if it's that or wait an additional three weeks for the next one to show up, I'd rather pay the additional money, get the more views on the video and whatnot. You gotta be realistic, right? So I guess this video is gonna sort of follow the journey of me getting the phone and then unboxing it, trying it out, and giving you some just initial impressions of it. Maybe I can do some additional video showing how I might use the cameras because that's one of the biggest new features is the front-facing camera, the difference of the rear-facing camera, the telephoto lens is different. So sometime this evening I should be heading out to Louisville to the Oxmoor Center to pick up my new iPhone. Here we are. Well, that was relatively quick and painless. iPhone 10 now in hand, 256 gigabyte space gray. Considering just how busy that store was, I'm really surprised that it was not a much more painful experience. Basically just walked in, got directed over to somebody who said, show me your order number, where's your driver's license? And like two minutes later, someone walked up with my phone. They had me sign something saying I'd received it and I'm gone. And now to drive back home and hopefully find the time to unbox this tonight because I would really like to start using it tonight or tomorrow. And now that I'm back home, the unboxing that you've undoubtedly seen about a billion and twelve times. But inside of the box, the paperwork, complete with notch. Of course, you've got the phone, complete with the plastic. Let's go ahead and remove that. I love that. That's great. You've got the ear pods, which I will probably never be touching, as well as the lightning to three and a half millimeter adapter, which again, I've never used. Lightning cable and simple power adapter, five volt, one amp. I tend to just leave everything in the box. It makes it easier when the time comes to actually sell the device. And then finally, the phone itself. And if I remember correctly, it's a 5.7 inch display and it's a full screen display with this little notch cut out of the top. Dual rear facing cameras, one wide, one telephoto. Some of the bigger differences between this and the eight plus are that the telephoto photo lens does have an f2.4 aperture and your front facing camera has a whole array of sensors and camera and whatnot in order to do the face id depth sensing and the emoji stuff which i'll probably not be using this is what the back of the phone looks like the space gray you can see all my lights and everything reflecting in it because it is extraordinarily reflective and it is definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet I don't know if, yeah you can start to see them there you get your big power button slash siri button on the side sim card slot here on the same side volume rocker and notification toggle on the other side as you would expect. Speaker and lightning port on the bottom, front facing speaker, open, it's already coming on. I guess I must have tapped the button. And I think it's time to go ahead and go through the setup process, which again, you've seen a billion times, but we're already at this setup screen. It's already ready to go. So let me go do that and do family stuff at the same time. Be right back. And a few minutes later, we are back. Very quickly went through the transfer process between the 8 Plus and the 10. You basically just have the two phones in proximity to one another. You take a photo from the 8 on the screen of the, you've probably seen it before again. And I stopped at the point where it was going to have me set up Face ID. So let's just quickly go through that. Has me entered a passcode. That was determined from my other phone. And now it says Face ID. So we'll hit continue. That's how to set it up. Position your face in the camera frame. Move your head in a circle to show all the angles. So position my face within the frame. I don't know if you're gonna be able to actually see this. First scan is complete. And the second one completed pretty easily. You basically just put your face in front of it and move it around in a circle. Face ID is set up. And I'm actually going through giving it my Apple information just to see if I have a backup I can pull out of. Might as well. But I thought I'd do a quick comparison between the dummy iPhone 10 I got and the real one. Just looking at them side by side, of course, space gray versus what turns out to be very black. They're very, very similar as they're supposed to be. Button sizing and placement and everything, exactly the same. Again, the color is the major differentiating factor and just the fact that it's different feeling in the hand. Not not a whole lot different. We do also have the option to turn on the True Tone display. We can see with and without. So this is currently with and without goes very blue. Maybe you can see that in the camera. 
And after having used the iPhone 8 Plus for a few weeks, I will say the biggest thing for me is just the size. I mean, it's very nice to have the sort of edge-to-edge -edge display where you can have very minimal bezels, although a lot of people are really complaining about these bezels. I'm not that big on bezels. I don't really care that much. I am definitely going to miss having a home button on it, and that notch is going to get on my nerves to some extent. I'm thinking that iPhone 10 2 or iPhone 11 or whatever they call the next one, iPhone 10s, iPhone XS, they'll probably figure a way around that notch. Either they'll make the display where it should have been and have it end right here below the notch, or they'll extend the phone up a little bit or something. But really, just the feel in the hand, it's very nice. It's ever so slightly bigger than the 7 or the 8 in this case, but it's comfortable. And I, of course, I'm going to be putting it in a case just because I can't justify a $1,200 phone without a case in my... Nope. And also, because I bought this from the Apple Store as a T-Mobile phone, they don't have unlocked, fully unlocked ones available. They did come with a T-Mobile SIM in it, which I've promptly removed. Now that I've restarted the phone, it says your passcode is required to enable Face ID. And also, I went ahead and put my own SIM in here, and it says TFW for Track Phone Wireless. Straight Talk uses Track Phone for their network. And it says Restore is completed. So now I just have to set up the Apple ID. One thing that's definitely going to take me a while to get used to is this dragging down from the top corner to get to all the Control Center stuff. Let's see, swipe up from the bottom edge at any time to return home. Switch between apps by swiping up and pausing. Quick access controls by swiping down from the top right, like I said. And welcome, swipe up to get started. And there we go. Now it's installing a bunch of apps that I had installed. And of course I have to give it all kinds of passwords and stuff to log into stuff, so let me go ahead and get that done. Typing on this has actually been really nice. And swiping up from the bottom to get back home is not bad at all. So you open the camera, swipe up to get back home. Open Chrome in this case, swipe up to get home. Swipe up and hold. Then you've got all of your apps that you've previously opened. That's not bad. Swipe down from the top and you get your control center. The other side, you get your notifications and in the middle, notifications. Let's go ahead and try the Face ID while we're in here. So we'll lift the phone up and it unlocked immediately. I don't know if that's really gonna show on camera, but let's just see if I can do it from the side here. And it's unlocked. Some of the videos I've seen about the iPhone 10 so far basically say that when you're comparing the iPhone 10's Face ID against older phones with the, the Touch ID, Touch ID is still miles and away faster because that just unlocked it there. Whereas I have to actually lift it up and then wait and then swipe, it's not instant. It's not nearly as fast, but it will get better over time. And kind of additionally, it's getting really warm. Restoring a bunch of apps, installing a bunch of stuff, it's going to do that obviously, but it is getting very warm to the touch. So just a good thing to note. And I guess while we're here, let's just do a very quick video test of the front and rear facing cameras because I tend to do that. So this is a video from the front facing camera of the iPhone 10. Looks very nice to me in the viewfinder here. It doesn't look like it's being stabilized at all, but that could be something that happens in post. I don't know if the front facing camera is stabilized, but I suppose we'll see, won't we? And this is video from the rear facing camera. I forgot to mention it before. Pretty sure it's 1080p on the front facing. This should be 1080p 60 on the rear facing by default, but it will go up as high as 4K 60, which is still ridiculous to me. Just taking a look in sort of my viewfinder over there, looking through the camera, it's confusing. I can see that I am framed up appropriately and it does look fine. I can't really tell in terms of colors and whatnot because the monitor I use is not great. But there you go, very quick first sample of the rear facing camera of the iPhone 10. And just very quickly taking a look, reviewing those videos, the coloring looked a lot different between the front and rear facing, but that could just be the fact that I had to start it facing away from me for the rear facing. And obviously the front facing is 1080p only, not 60 frames a second, so it doesn't look as smooth to me, but it's not bad. I mean, for a thousand dollar phone, you're going to expect the camera to be pretty good. And this is again, one of the best you can get. So I'm going to go ahead and start using this as my daily driver device, iPhone 10 in one pocket, Galaxy Note 8 in the other pocket, and my wife will end up taking the iPhone 8 Plus from me most likely, which means I might actually be selling my iPhone 7 sometime in the near future. I think I have one more video about the iPhone 7 coming at some point. If that works out, you'll see another video about it. If you don't see that, that phone will probably be up for sale here in the very near future. So if you're interested in a used iPhone 7, gently used, but still in amazing condition, let me know. But that is where I'm going to wrap things up for today. Definitely really looking forward to getting started using this phone. I noticed it just uh, Face ID unlocked automatically. Anyway, let me know what else you'd like to see me cover about this specifically. I've already covered a few cases for the phone. I might look into some other ones because you can never have too much protection for the phone, right? But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified whenever I put out new videos. And you can even ring the bell so you get notifications on your phone, laptop, desktop, or tablet if you still use the tablet. Click the like button if you like this video. And I'll see you again next time.